That means fruits from uh, comes into the marriage. The husband is entitled to use the property that she inherits, uh, the fruits of it, while she's still married. Uh, the fruits there of that, then, for example, like if she had an orchard, literally in the field, the fruits would be, well, he could use it while they're married. And he has certain responsibilities to her. He has to feed her. He has to go on God forbid she dies. He has to bury her with proper uh, things. He's got to do other things for her. If she's captured by a uh, boy, he has to redeem her. He's got to give her certain uh, privileges. And in turn, he gets privileges from her. And one of them is the Abu Mishum Shemaya. Or perhaps he might, he might cover up for the daughter of his uh, sister. He may have married his niece and she may have committed adultery. So even though he's divorcing her, uh, he's coming up for her and he's putting the date of the of divorce on a different time. He'll say, well, the time she, she had sex with this other man, she was already divorced from me, which is not a truth if he's trying to say a lie. He's trying to cover it up by not putting the time on, on the on divorce paper. Lo chashinah, there we don't have to worry. Mishum znus lo There it says, we don't worry about the daughter of his sister because forbidden sexual activity is not is not uh, as frequent. Here we say it is frequent enough that we have to go and make a decree that you have to get married on the fourth day of the week so that if he, can, if he complains about it, go to the fifth day. And the Gemara over there says it's not frequent enough. So there seems to be a contradiction. There, the Hossam there in the Gemara and uh, Keith and Omar were saying it's loose. Forbidden sexual activity. The Hossi penalty, the height of Hasra of Haiti with, with uh, warning before they committed uh, the forbidden sexual activity. Well, and with witnesses, that's not uh, usual because you usually don't have people warning you ahead of time against such things and usually if it's done, it's done uh, secretly. In Nami or else, uh, that in order that she shouldn't remain with him with prohibition because the Torah prohib prohibits a Jewish uh, husband to live with his wife or continue living with her if she committed adultery intentionally. All the days, so kosher, we worry about our people with this even for those days, even though it's not not uh, ordinary, not usual. All right, gentlemen, uh, let's uh, continue with uh, the Gemara now. For uh, joining us, uh, another time, and come a little earlier, we can learn something else. The important thing is to uh, learn. All right, gentlemen, where, did, where was the last section? We had we had learned uh, even though it's not uh, happened. Uh, now, we had learned the first part of the Gomorrah. I will start from the Gomorrah of Akshel, but we learned yesterday. The new Gomorrah. The Akshel, but now, about uh, about 16 lines from the bottom. Of the, of the, of the yeah, on the, yeah, on the fourth day of marriage, because of the diligence of the sages for the daughters of Israel that you should have a uh, modern to have us at least for three days, the first, the second, the third day of the week. And even that we learn, shock, that we have this uh, decree of the rabbi that they are diligent to protect the rights of the Jewish ladies. Host Chonino, he is mom, and only so. And then we learn, when it came to time, he doesn't, um, uh, she doesn't marry him. Often we go, she eats from him. Often we have a Shabbos. If the time that was appointed came on the first day of the week, when Tokshenu Yossi's not, she's not able to marry him because of the takona of the sages, he doesn't have to feed her. Therefore, once you have an honest, an accident happening that prevents a person from feeding the lady, also he or she became sick. Or she pierced a or she became, uh, started her menstrual period. All these things are things that happen. She doesn't have to feed her for that for that postponement of the wedding during that interim time. We can avoid. There are others that answer, ask it as a question. And this is what they say. If he became sick, what is the what is the idea? Also, there, by the case of the, the Takona of Shoknu, that you have to get married on the fourth day of the week, and no other day, Tama Mai, what's the reason? That, that he cannot marry her the others. It's a question of accident. He had no control over it. The rabbis won't permit him to get married except on the fourth day of the week. He's marrying a virgin. I mean, also honest. It's also a question of a accident. Um, he's sick. He did. Oh, dear, or perhaps you make a differentiation. Also, there, by the case of the Takona, there is an accident by, by virtue of the decree that the rabbis decreed. 
Oh, this is not a question of the decree of the rabbis. Perhaps here, he does have to feed her. Even if he's a and you will find to say. Even if he got sick, he has to feed her uh, for the time that he hasn't done. Uh, you following me, gentlemen? Wow. What would the law be by the case where she became sick? Okay, you know, he could say to her, perhaps, I am here ready to get married. Why should I be forced to feed you if you're not marrying me? Oh, the law, perhaps. What's your own relay? She could say to him, it's not close to deal. His pill has been inundated. It's his bad luck. He's got to feed me even though I can't marry him now. He keeps loving you, find to say, Hum Olay, she can say to him, It's not supposed to deal. His pill, his pill has been inundated. And his bad luck, why is this so? Why could she even think to say, after all, she became sick. Why did she think, he think to say, he became sick, he was stopping. She became sick, she's stopping. How come she's stopping it and she still can eat from it? That's disturbing, gentlemen. Because she's a parent. I mean, he's... They went to the first stage of marriage. They didn't go. She didn't go to the second stage of marriage. He can't live with her sexually. Why should he be forced to feed her now until she can? Because she can't live with her now sexually. That's that's true, but it's not his fault. He's prepared to marry her. Why did was this ever allowed in the first place? All these shadows. Uh, I mean, I, why why wasn't it just given the the both stages? Well, at the same time? if they would figure it all out. Now then we don't have the shadow, but that time, let's not ask the question. You understand what the question I'm asking, gentlemen? The question I'm asking is, under what theory would she say that uh, she's, she's, she should have the right to be fed if she's the one that stopped it? Is there supposed to be some kind of fairness involved here? I'm asking a question. You understand the question? We've been through the first stage of marriage, we talk about going through the second stage. That's true. But on the other hand, she didn't go to the second stage. I'm not complaining that it's not her fault. But why is it, on what theory is she complaining, is she saying that it's his, he's got the responsibility to feed me now? Because What's the theory? I know the theory would be that she's hungry and she wants to eat. Well, but class, don't, please just tell me because otherwise I got a lot of false theories stuck in my mind. Okay, okay, gentlemen, I want to call your attention. The first stage was on base on the base. That would be the first thesis on the right-hand side. You have it? The multi overlay, you have it? Multi overlay is not over the day. She can find, we can find to say, she can say to her, his pill has been inundated. And he is not able to, to make the uh, complaint. The other rabbi, contrary-wise, Maslo Gorin, your bad luck caused this to happen. You got sick. Why should I be called, uh, called my bad luck? Why can't I call it your bad luck? You understand the question? She got sick. She can't marry. And she's saying, it's your bad luck and you've got to feed me. Why is that right? Why can't he say the other way around? He can say, it's your bad luck. You can't marry me? You understand the question, gentlemen? I'll repeat it again. She can say to him, your field has been inundated. They knew York was toy. And he's not able to say to her, the other rabbi, contrary-wise, Maslo, Gorin, your, 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 your luck caused this, and you're out. Why not? This gives you a very good reason, and that's the reason I'm learning this taste with you, gentlemen. Listen very carefully. The key of the little beef kadal, a pure rebo. The lady, a Jewish lady, is not commanded on the midst of being fruitful and multiplied. The only one that's commanded on the fruitful and being multiplied is a Jewish man. You hear what I said? A Jewish lady, if she doesn't marry a husband, she's not committing a sin. A Jewish man that doesn't marry a wife is committing a sin. You hear this? Now, this sounds maybe not, a, not fair to you, but this is the way the Torah law requires. The Torah law gives the, uh, the thing that a Jewish husband is required to have children. A Jewish wife is not required to have children. So therefore, the Jewish husband has to marry in order to get children. Because children, gentlemen, I hesitate to tell you this, but the facts of life are that you can't have children on your own. You gotta have a wife to have children. Now, this is one of the facts of life. I think it's about time that you were told one of the facts of life. You can't have children if you remain a bachelor. Excuse me for pressing the issue, but this is the truth. 
And it's a mitzvah in the What's Torah. What's the connection to that, though? It says, oh, so you want to know why it's a Jewish husband? Because there's an extra word, kibshu. When God spoke to Adam Arishon, he said you should be fruitful and multiply, and you should conquer. And the, the, the Gemara says that the, the conquering wars are usually done by males, not by females. So the responsibility is on the man to marry, not on the lady, to have children. One of the reasons to get married is to have children. Of course, there's other reasons to get married, too. But one of the primary reasons is to have children. What is the connection with this stuff? Since she's not commanded on the mitzvah of poor Abu, there's no reason in the world why God should punish her by demanding, uh, by, by making her lose out. The only one that God punishes is somebody who does not fulfill his responsibilities. In other words, this is, if she gets sick, it's punishment to the husband. That's right. Ah, you got so it. If he gets sick, it's punishment. Well, why haven't he get sick, though? There again, he's commanded on the mitzvah. That's you, get the, you get the concept? God doesn't punish somebody for something they couldn't avoid. So therefore, when she, the Gemara says, she can say to him, it's your bad luck, that's the truth, because he's commanded on the mitzvah, she's not. You understand the logic of them? If a person is not commanded on the mitzvah, it's not their bad luck or anything. God doesn't punish anybody for something they were not required to do. God is not going to go and say to a Gentile, you're going to be punished because you didn't keep Shabbos. A Gentile is not required to keep Shabbos. He's not committing any sin. There it is. That's a Gentile. A Jew that doesn't keep Shabbos, we learn he should be put to death by God. And that's a big difference, isn't it? Because the truth is, if you're commanded, you're responsible for the commandment. In this case, the commandment is to be fruitful and multiply, and it's commandment on the husband, on the Jewish man. So therefore, if there'll be any, pun any uh, punishments or any things that stop him from having the full benefit of this thing because of his other sins or anything, it's a punishment on him. It's his bad luck. Not luck releasing. It's, it's his bad muzzle, or what we call it luck, but really it means that God caused him to have this trouble because uh, that he didn't deserve to have it without trouble. In other words, because the truth, the Gemara talks about whether there is such a thing as luck in Israel. And the majority opinion of the, in the Gemara and Shabbos near the end of the Gemara, it says that uh, there's no mazel in Israel God uh, gives us according to what we deserve. The theory of whether or not a person has a bad luck or not, it depends whether or not he's commanded to do it. So I'll read it again. She can say to him, your field is an undated. And he's not able to, to make the claim the other Rabbah, contrary-wise, Maslo Gorin, your luck caused it. Why? Even the low Bifi River, she, she's not commanded on, she will not be punished. Like we learned in the Gemara and Yavoma stuff, some of these, that God only punishes those that are commanded to do something and they don't do it in the right way, or they lose something. So this is a fundamental concept you should always remember. The reason that we are held to a higher standard is because we are responsible for higher standards of conduct. And therefore, if we fall short, we are punished by God because we are not living up to our responsibilities. You understand that concept, gentlemen? Remember it. And then, oh, and another reason? Is that you understand that? Uh, I'm telling you. Oh, you asked the question. Well, I, I, and the woman being punished. If the man is being punished, yes. Uh, if the man gets sick, that's a punishment. The woman gets sick, that's not... Why not? He's got to feed her. He doesn't get the benefit, but he gets the responsibility. Also, oh, the punishment goes to him. That's right. She says, see your man. That's right. Uh, you see, I want you to know one thing. You learn Gemara. It teaches you how to think. No. Well, no, this is, this is a wonderful thing. This is the reason why I'm learning this with you, that you should understand the tremendous depth there is in the Gemara. It's not just simple little stories or a person saying it's your bad luck or your bad luck. There's a reason why one has to has a responsibility and the one doesn't have responsibility. And each one of these, of course, we can go further if we want it. We can go to Gomorrah and the Gomorrah and look out the whole sugya, the whole uh, thing we'll discuss it to give the reasoning behind all this. But oh, another reason the, the taste is look inside. 
Now the Isha, he saw the Shabal. The wife is really like the field of the husband. Veda Baal saw the Shabal. And the husband is not the field of the wife. In other words, ordinarily the husband is supposed to be the the one that the master of the house and he's supposed to uh, yeah. yes and so it's his responsibility to care and the lady is not that not required uh, to make a living for herself he is required to for uh, us uh, to uh, support her in a proper way in english that way i don't know husband that. is someone's husband if we do not live up to our responsibilities obviously we're going to have any difficulties because we are required to live up to them if God forbid a Jew is not a Shomer Shabbos, he is punished by God. If God forbid a Jew does not eat kosher, he is punished by God. If, if a Goy doesn't eat kosher or he doesn't keep Shabbos, he's not punished by God. In other words, it's directly connected. You've got a responsibility, you have to live up to it. If you don't, you will, and if you have any, if there are any punishment coming forth, it's because of a punishment of the Jew rather than on the Goy. This particular case on the husband rather than on the wife. Any question? All right, let's go back to the Gemara. I just, as I learn, as I try to give you these insights so you understand, it's not as simple as it appears to be on the surface. I'm not trying to make it overwhelming, but I do want you to have understanding that there is very great depth in this. A lot of times we learn Gemaras from the Gemara, a a, 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 a rabbi that is a question, a judge of the question of the Jewish uh, halacha, takes the Gemara and breaks it for a proof for his position. And a lot of times that happens. We will repeat pretty soon now what the High Order learns about the attitude you must have for very mitzvahs. I've learned that with you three or four years ago, and by now you must have forgotten most of it. So I think it's appropriate to be review it again. Certain things, like for instance, if a mitzvah comes into your hand, you should do it right away. And if other things like that, uh, what, your, what your attitude should be towards fear of God, uh, whether of love of God, or love of what the responsibility of spending money in relation to doing mitzvahs, or avoid of errors. And it's, uh, we will learn that as well as learning this. Because I like to uh, give you different subjects so that you don't become stagnated in one subject. Not that one thing is no good. Everything is good. If you, Hashem, uh, if you get a variety, it, it makes it much more interesting. And my concept is not only to teach you how to learn, but also to give you a passion to further. Right? Let's go further. We'll turn back to the gentlemen. The longer, if you will find to say, or lay, she can say to him, his field has been an update, remember, because he is commanded on a mitzvah for a woman, she's not. If she got sick, it's his bad luck. Personita now, what if she became a menstruant? That's not something like sickness, it's not. It's a natural phenomenon, but to a lady during those days, uh, it feels very bad. Hormone changes and uh, uh, discharges, it makes her feel bad. Now, Prasaspas also go to boil At the time when she has a regular period, as a lady usually does during childbearing age. Uh, and she has a regular period uh, about once a month. I can say, she couldn't say to him, your field has been inundated, this is a natural phenomenon. Every girl, uh, every lady of a childbearing age has a period. He to boil a call, when is it a question to you? At the time when she doesn't ordinarily have a period, now all of a sudden she has a period. My, what's the law? The deed.